everyone and welcome to another case study. This one will be on wound infection. All right, let's get into it. The scenario is a 57 year old female client had a large mole removed from her left upper arm by a dermatologist two days ago. She woke up this morning with eight out of 10 pain in her entire left arm. She arrives to the ER and the nurse notes that the skin and tissue around the wound is reddened, very swollen and warm. The wound drainage is foul smelling and has a greenish yellow color. The client's current temperature is 100.6. She is admitted to the medical sur surgical unit with cellulitis. Question 1. Select the four most important assessment findings the nurse should follow up on. Increased temperature, 8 out of 10 pain, dyspnea, left arm tingling and numbness, leukocytosis, and diminished left radial pulse. All right, so I'll give you guys about 20 seconds to answer the question. If you want to simply go, to the, go on to the next question, just fast forward. Question two, based on the nurse's findings, the client is at risk for complications as a result of her cellulitis and wound, especially blank and blank. So choose the top two options. We have neurovascular compromise, myocardial infarction, diabetic ketoacidosis, sepsis, hyperkalemia, and anemia. Question 3. The client is diagnosed with cellulitis and the wound culture has come back positive for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, otherwise known as MRSA. Use an X to indicate whether the nursing actions are indicated, contraindicated, or non-essential. Remember when you see indicated, think essential. Is this, you know, is this an indicated action? Is this an essential action for this client at this time? Place the client in contact precautions. Apply cold compress on the client's left upper arm. Elevate the client's left arm on a pillow. Initiate IV therapy for the client to receive prescribed IV fluids and antibiotics. Administer subcutaneous sodium heparin every 12 hours. Question 4. The physician prescribed IV, daptomycin, and tobramycin to treat the infection. What health teaching will the nurse include for the patient prior to the administration of these medications? We will be monitoring you for any nausea or diarrhea that may occur when taking these drugs. Please let a nurse know if you have any ringing in your ears. We will be monitoring your kidney function while you are on this drug therapy. Although rare, let us know if your muscles feel weak or if you feel them tightening. We will be drawing blood frequently to measure drug levels to make sure they are effective. We will be changing the IV site often to prevent your veins from getting irritated. We will discontinue your maintenance IV fluids after we make sure you don't have any nausea and your fever comes down. Question 5. A few days later, the client develops frequent diarrhea that is foul smelling. The client also reports some abdominal discomfort. The client is then diagnosed with Clodistridium difficile, or C. diff. The nurse knows that the following precautions will be implemented. Select the top two actions the nurse should take, so the top two that should be implemented. Wear a mask in the client's room. Use strict hand hygiene measures. Record the number of stools the client has had each day. Use strict contact precautions, teach the client to increase dietary fiber, and restrict oral fluids for the client to decrease stools.
All right, let's go to the answers. So question one, select the four most important assessment findings a nurse should follow up on. So we want to follow up on that increased temperature. 100.6, typically anything above 100.4 is considered a fever. Um, the left arm tingness, tingling and numbness, which we'll kind of explain more later. Leukocytosis. Leukocytosis is an elevated white blood cell count, an indication of infection, so something we want to um, note and follow up on. And then the diminished left radial pulse, along with the left arm tingling and numbness, we'll get to why that's important coming up here. So in this question, based on the nurse's finding, the client is at risk for complications as a result of her cellulitis and wound, especially blank and blank. So neurovascular compromise. That is why it is important for us to follow up on that left arm tingling and numbness and also the diminished radial pulse on the left arm. When the edema is building up in her arm, it can cause um, compression of the nerves and that in that case they'd get the neurovascular compromise um, so that is why it, it is important to monitor and then sepsis as well because we know that any localized infection can become systemic and be a systemic effect infection so we'd be monitoring her for symptoms of sepsis as well Question three. So let's see, place the client in contact precautions. So because she has MRSA, MRSA is a contact, do contact precautions for. So yes, we want to do that. Apply cold compress on the client's left upper arm. So this is contraindicated because like we talked about that neurovascular compromise as the edema is building up and can compress the nerves leading to numbness and tingling and also a diminished um, left radial pulse. So leading to that vascular compromise as well. If we put cold on her arm, we'd farther compromise that and restrict kind of the blood vessels would constrict and it would contribute to those symptoms even more. So we don't want to do that. If anything, we would do warm to help diffuse, bring more blood supply to that area of the tissue. Elevate the client's left arm on a pillow. That is indicated to help decrease the edema and swelling in her arm. Initiate IV therapy for a client to receive prescribed IV fluids and antibiotics. Yes, that's indicated. One big thing here, too, is it says we're giving prescribed IV fluids and prescribed antibiotics. You can kind of know, okay, the doctor has prescribed these. That is indicated. Also, relating to the reason she's here for MRSA and infected wounds, cellulitis, we know as a nurse through our critical thinking that we'd likely be giving antibiotics. So that makes sense. And then administer sub-Q sodium heparin every 12 hours. Uh, for this, it's non-essential. This is because it doesn't imply that she'll be staying in bed. She'll be walking, moving around. Obviously, it's physician preference as we would be giving sub-Q heparin to prevent DVTs, which is a big thing in the hospital. So always follow your orders. But in this case, because she's moving around, it's not indicated at this time. Question four, the physician prescribed IV daptomycin and tobramycin to treat the infection. What health teaching will the nurse include for the patient prior to the administration of these medications? So all of these are right, all seven of them, I believe. And on the new NCLEX, this, is, this can happen, all can be right. Going through, we'll be monitoring you for any nausea or diarrhea that may occur while you're taking these drugs. Um, antibiotics can kind of cause that GI upset and as we know, can cause C. diff. So that's something we'd be monitoring for. Um, tobramycin can cause ringing in the ears, so we'd be monitoring for that. They can be nephrotoxic, so we'd be monitoring kidney function. Additionally, daptomycin can cause the muscles to be weak and things like that, so we'd be monitoring that. Uh, for the drawing blood levels frequently to make sure the drug levels are effective, um, they have a therapeutic range but also a toxic range, so that's why we'd be monitoring the drug levels while we're giving the, this therapy. Change the IV site often. These antibiotics and in any med or most medications can be can irritate the veins, so it's always good to kind of rotate. Make sure you're checking your IV sites to make sure there's no infiltration, phlebitis, redness, swelling, things like that. We'll discontinue your maintenance IV fluids. If she's getting maintenance IV fluids because she can't keep anything down, right? If she drinks water, she's just nauseous, vomiting it, vomiting it up right now. So that's why it's um, this makes sense that we kind of discontinue IV fluids once they are less nauseous. Question five. So a few days later, they develop the diarrhea that's foul smelling. They have C. diff. So what two actions are we going to implement? N95 is not indicated. Um, use strict hand hygiene measures. That is correct. And then use strict contact precautions. That is also correct. So big thing is preventing this from spreading to anyone else. So definitely use your hand hygiene and also contact precautions while you're working with someone who has C. diff. 
all right this is the book i used for reference and thank you guys so much for watching uh please subscribe and like for more videos like this i will be posting more case studies to help you prepare and study develop that critical thinking uh for the nclex so all right have a great day you guys i'm nurse kaylee thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one